Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud, and this is the Triple X Dirty Thirty Challenge. MTV the Challenge, Triple X Dirty Thirty Challenge. Um, first of all, can we just cut the Triple X? Like, is anyone saying like, "Hey, this is"? The... Everyone's saying this is the Dirty Thirty, right? No one's. What? What's up with the Triple X? I only bring this up because it's not really safe for work, is it? You know, like I can't, I can't like look up on the computer. Like I want to find out what the challenge is up to and shit. I want to look up scenes. No, they don't like that when it's like three X's <laughs> to start your searches. It's not good. And also, we should cut out um, three other <laughs> letters. MTV. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like no one, no one respects you when when you're trying to recommend a show to anybody. Don't open it with saying, like, on MTV, oh my gosh, you can see everyone just lose interest immediately, roll their eyes, look downward, or look more intensely into you and saying, like, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, they, you can't even say the challenge by that time when they're shooting that look at you and stuff like that. It's, oh my gosh, it really cuts to you. <laughs> the point is, I have not been able to recruit any new fans of the show um outside of just uh podcasting about it but then but then again like who listens to a podcast about a subject they've never fucking heard of really you know or have any interest in so anyways that's outside of the podcast that's my story but inside this story it is the dirty 30 episode three veronica versus Brittany. All right, it's not really that title. It should be called Veronica vs. Brittany. It's actually called Pride Before the Fall. How does that make sense? What does that, who is that in reference to? Does anyone, who's proud before they fall in this episode? You know? And do they really fall? Like, if you want to talk about anyone eliminated this episode, uh, are they really eliminated? No. There's not even a hint of danger to those who do lose this elimination this episode, <laughs> you know? I'm just kind of getting some of the shit out of the way because I'm like, oh my god, I hate recording by myself. I just want to fucking blast through this episode and just give you the cliff notes, I guess. I don't know. It's just, uh... <laughs> I honestly hate recording by myself. I like the episode, but... And so whatever criticisms I have... Uh, really, when I'm writing them down, they're like, hey, whatever, you know, this is how it is. But the fact that I'm also a little annoyed <laughs> while discussing the episode might paint it a little bit darker than I intend. So we'll just go through it uh, this way. Like I was saying before, the episode should be called Veronica versus Brittany because um, Veronica, you know, she draws the, the double cross card. Correct? And then she sends in Brittany. Why? Because her complete disinterest. You know what I mean? She's so indifferent to this this uh, woman, you know? And uh, I just like the explanation. I like the fact that Brittany goes on to win the elimination, comes back, and Veronica's like, shit. All right. You know, and, and again, Veronica, um, she gets the double cross card. A lot of power goes to the best of the worst of these episodes now. Um, I'll get into that more later. Um, but yeah, you know, she's given power and I'm like, good, Veronica, you're relevant right now. That is fucking awesome. I like this shit. You didn't win the mission. You were at the bottom. But once again, it comes to a best of the worst scenario. Um, the beginning of the episode, you celebrate the winner of the mission and you kind of boo and look down the losers and the runner-ups. But at the end of the episode, you're then rooting for the best of the worst. It, you know, So you're always just kind of like, yes, here you go. It's, it's a very clever thing that the producers have pulled. I'll just say that. Um, they kind of won me over in this episode. It's interesting. I do have some complaints as always, um, but <laughs> we'll get into all that shit later. Uh, yeah, it's called Pride Before the Fall. Didn't mean shit. Despite... <laughs> what else is next? Oh, um, okay. So this episode was watched by uh, 0.84 uh, people. 
uh, basically, I think that's 840,000 people. And typically, you know, a challenge used to be at its very least in the million mark. You know, it hasn't been there for a long time, but these are still kind of low. However, all in all, the first episode was 0.84. The second episode dropped to 0.82, but now we're right back to 0.84. And I think that's despite the production structureless uh, way that they're showing things. You know, we're not having a typical beginning, middle, or an end, you know? It's all cliffhangers, basically. And uh, on top of that, you know, at the very beginning, and this, for me personally, the fact that they didn't mention, or TJ didn't mention the million dollar uh, prize money, you know? I'm like, why? That is so fucking needless. Why do you, why can't you present that as an actual um, uh, twist, you know? Like, catch the audience off guard. Can you imagine that? In episode four, finally, they're like, hey, guess what? I have the biggest, um, yeah, I have the biggest bomb of them all in terms of, like, secrets and shit. And everyone's like, wow, and screaming and shit. Show that in the trailer and just show the fact that there's a huge fucking twist. And that will be the twist. Everyone wants to tune in for at least episode four because, you know, maybe the maybe the, view sh- the views uh, drop a little bit. Uh, but the production is cleverly spreading out information, you know? So you, no matter what, they're kind of like, it's kind of like a tent pole scenario. You know, you, you ever look at a tent, it's like low, high, a little bit higher, and then at the very peak, that's the rooftop. Then it, you know goes down a little bit and then uh, (laughs) I don't know what I'm saying but the pros however though I feel like this is why the numbers have been going back up it's because the cast is strong very strong cast Um, the flow of twists Uh, even though I'm kind of complaining that nothing is really happening especially with the eliminations um, the way information is being doled out to us is very interesting Um, and it's also storytelling that is here to stay, uh, to stay, because, again, this is going to be f- cliffhanger galore, you know, galore, galore. I said, I thought it sounds so weird right now, but yeah, that's what it is. It's going to continue to be told like this, where there's not really a big classic mission elimination, you know, uh, elimination drama with the deliberation, you know, that sort of stuff, and then you have an ending. It's all, it's all just kind of being played out before you in a different fashion. It's almost like the producer, producers can't help themselves but to just like, well, oh my God, we're known for being twist, right, guys? Like, like, let's do that. And I just want to say, no, you were known for a show that had great characters and great competition. And you were once very fun. And, and yes, twists were part of it, but now you're just like relying on twists like crazy, like a fucking clutch, man. Let's go on here, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, first elimination of the season ever, right here, is episode three. And we're introduced to the double cross. You pull out shit like it's a goddamn carrot in a garden. And you know what? One carrot is fine, <laughs> but if you have two carrots, no. If you have a cross, that means you're definitely up for, uh, you're still on the chopping block for elimination. And then with the double cross, hey, you are safe. You get to throw in whoever you want in elimination, right? Like I said before, best of the worst, they get these magical fucking powers now. You know, they get weird powers for not winning. Everyone gets a role to play. Um, this is me complaining, but this is also me saying, like, you know what? Shit, now you have to care again. You know, it's still up in the air. Who is going to make what decision? The true Dirty 30 scenario that is playing out isn't the, necessarily the winners of the missions. Um, those are, like, good guy wins. But then you have, like, the badasses, the bad guys ruling the second half of that scenario where it's like the best of the worst you know it's like the scum now what happens between those guys and shit like that so now i'm fucking liking this episode i'm liking this season it's starting to come together and shit 
Uh, we're going to have Corey versus Derek H. Why? Because Dario pulled the double cross. He spares Leroy. Uh, there's no love between Dario and fellow Are You The One person, Derek H. Uh, why? Because, you know what, Dario, he burns his citizenship card of Are You The One. You know, he's just like, no, man, I'm never going back. I am a full-on challenge member. And honestly, I kind of always forget that Dario's from Are You The One. He's just He just fits into the show. Um, and he spares, he helps out his friend, right? I mean, he sends in Derek H. He also spares Leroy, which is a good polit uh, move politically because Laura, uh, Leroy's tight in with those veterans. Um, so yeah, Corey has to go against Derek H. In the, what is it called? Balls to the wall? Balls on fire and you have to yank it through um, the walls and the ceiling? Like, it was awesome looking. It was so cool to look at and interesting to see how things played out. Um, Corey, I didn't have too much faith in him. You know, I'm just like, Corey, he's not a mission dude, really. He's not an elimination dude. And he's he's not really a final dude. I mean, yeah, he's fucking placed, he placed second. And he placed third. But, you know, you you wouldn't really say like, oh my god, he that is his jam. The finals aren't his jam. Missions, eliminations. You know, you know what his jam is? Pussy. <laughs> Getting laid, motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's all it is. Really, he's basically Tony. You know, Tony and Corey are basically the same guy. As long as they're in the house... The storyline will somehow involve them. But in this scenario, Corey is once again... He, he, he beats Derek H. He is now responsible, in his own words. He's like, I have single-handedly this season sent four people home now. Darrell, uh, Shane... Uh, who was another guy? Fuck. Oh my god, I can't remember. But, well, uh, And then, uh, plus the guy who was just eliminated, Derek H., which is sad for for uh, Tori, but good for me, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Who's the other fucking guy? Oh, ammo. Yeah. So, <laughs> I just, it's true. Corey ha has eliminated four men out of this fucking game, and I like how he fucking present it, presents it as such. You know, it's good, real good. Um. On to Brianna. She's going to go against Brittany. Why? Because Veronica pulled the double cross. She spared Jenna and she spared Jemmy. Um, because, again, indifference. To, she was like, I don't even know who Brittany is. I can't even begin to wonder. You know? So she just, like, without hesitation, she's like, Brittany. You know what I mean? Um, but honestly, it's like, uh, I guess you don't feel like Brianna's much of a threat. So why even risk? angering Jenna and throwing her into elimination, you know, because, because otherwise, if you want to get rid of a really good competitor right now, it's fucking Jenna, you know? So I'm I'm thinking, I'm wondering, and I'm hoping that Veronica still has her eye on the ball. She still has her nose to the grindstone, or the ear to the ear to the ground? Nose to the ground? The grindstone? <laughs> God damn it. You know? I just hope she knows what she's doing, and because it's like, yeah, is it cool that she just throws Britney in? Because why? Because I don't even, I barely knew you were there, you know? Like, your name, wallpaper, the wallflowers, whatever. Like, I, holy shit, I almost ran into you because I could not see you there. Who are you? You know? And Britney is a fucking ex-beauty uh, pageant person, you know? So it's also an insult to her fucking stick, sticking out and stuff and being known and like, shit, man. <laughs> Uh, and spares Jemmy. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, Jemmy's not going to owe you anything. She's not going to want to owe you anything. So, uh, shit. It doesn't matter. You know what? Brianna versus Brittany, it's a much more tighter fucking fight in the elimination. It's actually neck and neck. Down to the, you know, last ball for each of them. They're, tr you're, they're trying to pull it out of the wall. They're both experiencing difficulties, but what... Brittany does, is Brittany? Yeah. What Brittany does is that she actually kind of cranks it from left to right and up and down instead of just like, you know, in and out. And she starts crumbling the wall around it, gets it out, and she fucking wins. 
you know, Veronica's like, ah, shit, she's gonna fucking come after me now. And, um, crazy. Corey wins. Brittany wins. Derek H is, is gone. You know, Tori is, is very sad. She's very spiteful. Derek H is leaving, but he's also saying, like, you know, whoever makes the move on, uh, what's her name? Not Brittany, goddamn, Tori. Um, I'm gonna be mad, and, and, you know, all the anger and sadness is gonna be, you know, struck in your face and shit. I don't know what he said exactly, but I'm like, oh my god. Fucking. <laughs> Tori is sort of single in my eyes. If I was in the, ch if I was in that challenge house, you know, I'd be like, oh my god, Tori is just a, the coolest chick ever. And I know, you know, like, I, I'm not gonna fucking make a move, but I would definitely <laughs> get this weird feeling you know, <laughs> that I had some sort of a chance where I'm like, you know what, <laughs> after this, <laughs> I don't know what I would tell her. I would just feel like, you know, after a while, you know, maybe her eyes will wander towards me. Of course, I will be supportive and whatnot, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, but you know what, though? Fucking Brianna's gone. And I was kind of like, ah, shit, that sucks too, you know? I, I didn't like the fact that Derek H. left either. I do I did prefer Corey overall. Um, and I'm surprised with Brittany. Impressed as well. But then again, I don't feel anything after this. Because now, Derek H. and Brianna walk into the Redemption House. Where we will not have an elimination, by the way. Nothing will happen. What They're still in this house. You remember the last time we had this scenario? It was called Exiled in the Battle of the Exodus 2. But what saved that was the fact that there was only room for two, basically. You know, a guy, a guy and a girl. And, a, and you know, they, they were, that's how it was fucking paired off. So they would have to have an elimination to decide who actually gets to have to keep going on in this exile position until showing up in the actual house again. Uh, and that was cool. That was cool to see. It, it wasn't on the show. Thankfully, so far, the Redemption House is on the show, even though it's not doing shit. It's, that's the weird thing. But uh, I'm just saying is that nothing happens now. They're just in the house. And what is weirder is that when they show up, it's like late at night, and the, the rest of the cast is still kind of sleeping in their bunks. So, like, when they see him, they're like, oh, hey, man. Hey, that's cool. Oh, my God. I'm really fucking bad. You know, like, the producers want people to be like, oh, shit. What the fuck is this? I'm pissed or I'm happy or I'm whatever. You know what I mean? But instead, they're trying to sleep. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Producers are always notorious in my mind for making these weird fucking decisions when it comes to scheduling. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but now I feel nothing. Now I'm just like, wow, so then Brianna is still here. You know, Amanda's still here, thank God. But really, no one's gone. So now I absolutely feel nothing. <laughs> but you know what? Now I'm going to uh, I'm gonna feel something now. Um, you know, the fucking, uh, the experience, the visceral experience of this mission called Battle Royale, which is... Now a staple in the challenge, of course, which is, you know, you you run into people you, down, down a narrow uh, passageway, a little hallway, and you just hit people, you know. Um, but minus, I just got to say this, and this sucks because it's uh, two big teams against each other, you know, guys heat, girl heat, but no ammo and no Nicole. Because, because why? Like, who gives a shit? Put odd teams on whatever right like shouldn't i don't know they should have tried to think of something but producers are like you know what this we need a certain amount of um cast in this mission and we have two you know we have one too many you know ammo and nicole turns out because they aren't selected for the teams but they have to sit out that is lame as shit and they're also automatically into the draw scenario and that is unfair and it's also kind of like stupid on the producers of like, hey, why? I mean, that is a, you know, it's like a slap in the face, but then you're more concerned because it's like, why are you paying these these people to be on the challenge when you're not going to let them compete to only push them aside? You know, that is ridiculous. It's fucking weird. It's a waste. You know, they, they had people sit out of missions 
on Invasion of the Champions, but that's because they won their pass to the the Good House, I guess, something like that, the Oasis. So, you know, I didn't like it, but at least it made some kind of sense. It, they had some sort of reasoning. This has no reasoning whatsoever. They're just like, listen, um, sure, we could have waited until this actual number was available for us um, to have this mission, but we don't want to wait. And we don't want to try and adjust to who we have right now. So, you know what? Turns out, ammo, you're not going to compete at all. You're just going to be in the next episode, and you're going to draw uh, crosses. Maybe a, maybe a double cross. Who knows? Uh, same with you, Nicole. You know? It's just totally fucking... I hated it. You know, the more I think about it, I'm like, God damn it, that's fucking stupid. But it's fine, you know, because the mission kind of makes up for it. I mean, no, it's not fine. But again, I start to feel better. When the mission starts, it's basically a battle between two philosophies. There's Dario and there's Kayla. They are the randomly drawn captains. And again, it's philosophy versus philosophy. Starting with the blunt force, Dario, uh, once again is in charge of how things shake down in this episode. Remember, he drew the double cross, and he threw in Derek uh, H., you know? And now, he's a fucking team captain, and he's in charge of building a team, and he fucking builds an amazing fucking team. Uh, CT, Leroy, Hunter, Corey, uh, with Cara Maria, Tori. Mm, Tori, oh my gosh. Uh, I feel like I'm going to freak her out if she ever heard this podcast. Like, stop fucking, like, focus. Who's next on the list, motherfucker? I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Anissa's up next on the list. Tori, I'm sorry. Uh, Veronica is on the list. And so is Marie. Uh, way to go, Marie. But you know what? This is a huge fucking team. Very massive. And Kayla goes for the opposite philosophy. <laughs> Uh, but you can add some muscle, uh, you know, you can you can put some bigger guys is the thing. Kayla is going the opposite. She puts bananas. Uh, again, is he great? Yes. But he's not the biggest guy. You know, I don't know how tall he is or how short he is, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. But he might, I, I want to throw a number out there. I have no idea. I, I want to be corrected uh, by any kind of listeners who care. Um, is he 5'9"? I have no idea, you know? I, I really have no idea. I know that I've heard of other challengers, and it turns out they're way shorter than I thought. Because obviously, you know, you see people on a competition, you're like, oh my god, they're, you know, they're giants and shit, you know? They're amazing, they're stars and stuff like that. But, uh, again, Chinese not that big, and neither is Nelson. I know that. He is ripped, he is an amazing athlete, but he's not the tallest person in the world. Um, Tony's pretty tall. He's on here. Um, Jordan, again, I don't think he's that tall either, especially compared with, you know, the other, uh, players that I just mentioned on the opposite team. And then you have Derek K. Derek is powerful once again, but he's, he's a pit bull, you know, he's a short, fierce dude, but he's not a big, blunt object. Um, and then <clears throat> for Kayla's female, she has Jenna, Camilla, Jemmy, Brittany. Not the biggest girls, not even the most powerful girls either, you know? Although, no, I, I guess I'll take that back. Jenna and Camilla for sure. Um, but you know what? <laughs> Who else fucking puts up a fight, turns out, is Brittany. And in fact, it comes down to this. Oh, wait, shit. Am I jumping up? Jumping past a little bit? Yeah. Let's just get into the men's heat real quick. Just bare bones. Team Dario wins. Why? Because they're fucking full of behemoths and they have these, you know quick little hunters hunters <laughs> behemoths versus hunters no uh behemoths versus uh what would you say ninjas i guess but you know size when it comes down to a scenario like this especially hall brawl whatever you want to call it t-bone whatever it's been called over the years the size has the advantage overall you know i don't think ever since its invention or introduction to the challenge has the smaller guy won look that shit up man yeah <laughs> um so the guys win the men's heat i mean team daria wins that one good for those guys on the women's heat 
Team Daria wins again, but due to Veronica. It comes down basically to Veronica and Brittany again. This is round two. I said this episode should be called something. I'd rather this be called Veronica versus Brittany. Um, you know, they're fucking in the middle of the hallway. Veronica has her ring. They both have each other's ring. But Veronica chooses to stop Brittany right in the hallway and wrestle with her a little bit. Tries to take her down. Tries to kind of push her up against the wall. Just stall her while... Maybe Veronica gets to recharge her battery. She's like, now, now i got to get ready to sprint because now I, it's just going to come down between the two of us. And that's exactly what happens. Eventually, they part ways. They run back to, to each other's respected bells or whatever. No, they're hooks. They are hooks because they have rings. They have to put that on the hook. And it was like, what, what did TJ say? Six of a hundred... Hundred? Six, six out of a hundred seconds. Um... Uh, was the difference and I'm like yeah bullshit you know but and and also when I watch it I'm like I could have swore that Veronica was the last place person because like doesn't she kind of le- it stays on her hand like it it hangs on her hand before it actually falls off or something like that it, it's weird it doesn't actually fall and that's all I saw maybe I wasn't paying too much attention to Brittany but I could have swore that Brittany got it, but it's Veronica. Um, I only watched this episode once, so you know I'm just gonna agree with producers, I guess, and I'm guessing listeners will as well. They're like, no, he's, she's, it's so fucking obvious. Um, so there you go, Team Dario wins overall, uh, and then the rest, you know, the losing team is gonna be in the draw, and that's exciting, right? Well, it doesn't matter because it's just done now. Cut to black, fade to black. Um, you know, but I didn't care overall. Maybe I'm just slowly getting chipped away at how, like, none of the episodes make sense to me and shit. But going back to how they pan out, you know, how they how they deal out information, the, how the twists uh, unravel and stuff like that has been interesting to me. And, you know, maybe it'll plateau or, or something like that soon but right now i'm like this is mesmerizing man i like this so uh yeah that was episode three uh like subscribe comment uh this uh yeah battle of, Chall- <laughs> battle of challenges podcast with vincent cloud adios